Game of the Week is supported by Invergrove Heights Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's closer than you think. Midwest One Bank, you're the one. Invergrove Heights Schools, inspire, innovate, excel, a community commitment. Ultimate Carpet and Upholstery Cleaning, the cleaner, greener carpet cleaner. And good evening here. And good evening here. Welcome to the Town Square Television Game of the Week between the Bloomington Kennedy Eagles and the St. Croix Lutheran Academy Crusaders here at Crusader Stadium at St. Croix Lutheran Academy in West St. Paul. The Eagles come in here 0-3, trying to find their first win of the season. The Crusaders off to a 3-0 and start, a turnaround from a disappointing 2-8 and season last year. They're trying to regain some of their old form from the 2010s when they won a few state championships. And they're off to a 3-0 start, and they're, they're looking really confident going into this game. Yeah, good to see them back in the win column after you said a, a rough 2019. Uh, a lot of change during that year. You know, head coach finally uh, retired after 50 years. Uh, they had kind of a, not a real strong class of seniors, so a lot of the juniors were getting playing time for the first time. But now they have that year under their belt. Zach Longville, the quarterback, he's in his third year starting, and uh, yeah, it looks like they're they're back to their regular form. And then it will be the Crusaders kicking off tonight. They're wearing the red jerseys, and then uh, Bloomington Kennedy will be in the white, and they have the dark blue helmets as a visiting team. Head coach Adam Fry for the Crusaders. Number 26, Dr. Sankovich will kick off for the Crusaders. And here's the kickoff as we are about to get started. Yeah, Crusaders sporting a little bit of a new look this year with uh, the gray pants. Kind of looks pretty sharp. And we're underway. It's That's going to be a short kick out of bounds. It went out about the 25, but. That's right. One, one thing we might note for our viewers, there's no numbers on the field, but there are the <laughs> markers on the sidelines. And so it takes a bit of it getting used to because that's not the way it is at most high schools, but we know where we are on the field. Coach Kedrick Williams for the Eagles. Yeah, and uh, walking into the, the stadium here, you know, we're using a different entrance than normal, and I kind of cut across the field just to check out the field condition. Field's in, in kind of weird shape. You know, the grass is it's still pretty full from not having very many games on, but um, when they cleared the snow, off the field, like they, they took a lot of grass with it. And they really did. You can see the, the grass in mixed in with the snow that hasn't melted yet. You know, clumps of grass here on the sidelines mixed in with the snow as you mentioned. And it's kind of a... Uh, I don't think it will be a factor in the game, but you know, we, we, sh we should yeah. be able to know one way or the other pretty quick. So we're about to run the first play here. Rest of the talk something over. I don't know if they're changing game balls, uh, but uh, yeah, they probably. I'm sure each team. I know the kickers usually have a ball that they prefer. Okay. Then the quarterbacks usually have a different ball, and then you know with COVID, each team probably has their own ones. That would make a difference. So a run for Kennedy on its first play. Uh, Zachary Zesh is the quarterback for the Eagles. So he's under center tonight, uh, 5'10", junior. Yard line for second down. And so that was a couple of yards there on that first run for the Eagles. Zesh is from the shotgun here on second down. Four receiver set. He's going to throw out and he misses his target. That was uh, Rajon Walker as the intended receiver. 6'2 sophomore. We got a good look here. It is a forward pass by about a yard, yard and a half. Just simply couldn't get a grip on that ball. 
You know, Zesh is going to line up under center, has a couple of receivers to his right and left. And it's going to be a run, a short gain for the Eagles. That was Dion Barber on the carry. An interesting thing about Dion Barber, he is a cousin of Tyler Johnson who played for the Gophers and now is with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right. So the Eagles will punt, going three and out here. So a good defensive stand for the Crusaders. And it's a fake. Wow. Completed pass. And he has daylight. And he's gone for the touchdown. Perfect That call. was Marquise Monroe on the fake punt with the touchdown grab. So they had the ball at the 37 yard line. He took that to the house and the Eagles get on the board first. Yeah, and he was wide open and you know, it's just him and the punt returner left and with all that open space, it's it's hard to take the appropriate angle to tackle him. Yeah, it really is. That perfectly executed fake punt play. The extra point is good. And the Eagles go up seven to nothing with 10.36 left in the first half. Now, I will admit, I saw Thursday night football last night. I know there was a fake punt play, but I don't remember if that resembles the same play we just saw tonight, if they <laughs> watched that. But I know there was a kind of a back that got out into the flat, kind of like here. Coming in with the Eagles being 0 and 3. And of course, remember, remember this is a six-game season this year, not an eight-game regular season. So halfway through the season, they haven't gotten a win. It might be a team that's tempting to look past, but the Crusaders clearly getting a wake-up call here, knowing this is not a team they can look past, and they're going to be here to play tonight. Well, and being 0 and 3, why not take a few chances? They were, you know, 37-yard line. Not, not probably the best to risk it, but. No, not at all, but definitely a good calculator risk there. But just a quick note, that was Christopher Martin throwing the pass on the fake punt uh, for the touchdown. Eagles to kick off. And the Crusaders on the return. A short They're kick and good return. Pushing it toward line. midfield. It's going to be about the 45 yard line. It's Rajon Walker with the tackle there for the Eagles as the Crusaders take over here. There's a good look the at the new uniforms. I believe those helmets are new, too. Yeah, they had the SC for many years, kind of the San Francisco 49ers circular look. This is the first time I've seen these, too. Here's a running play up the middle, and he's gone. One more man to beat. <laughs> and he stopped short at the goal line. Ran out of gas. Yeah, I just lost a little bit. A little bit of momentum there. I mean, he had that nice run. I mean, he just takes off there. Yeah, and that's that's the old Crusaders that we're used to seeing kind of running that veer option offense. That was Zach Art with the run all the way to the goal line. So first and goal here from the two. Longville under center with a couple backs in the backfield, one receiver to the left and the right, and they're in. Touchdown Crusaders. Just a straight handoff and just bust right through. And just like that, less than a minute later, we're about to be tied up, but they can hit the extra point.
Well, as you said before, the Crusaders have been known for the running game and just kind of getting big plays in the running game as well. It's a tough physical football program, and they're kind of oh, yeah. going back to that old look. I don't, I don't know how familiar with you are or with the Crusaders, but yeah, they've had some running backs that have put up some gaudy numbers over the years. Most recently, Mike Stern. Oh, I think you had like 33 touchdowns on the year. Oops. And then uh, that might have been, actually that might have been like through the sections. Oh, I wow. Think, I think he ended with high high 30s. And that's still three, four touchdowns a game, even going to the section tournament. Yeah. Uh, Wesley Tucker was a great one. Um, Jeffrey DuBose, he was oh, on ESPN right. because he, I don't know, he had like 350 yards rushing and six touchdowns in one game. He, were you at their Goblin first game at the all. Metrodome where they went back and forth with Providence Academy? The first quarter, I think each team had like 28 points or something. I, I believe so. It was just a constant adrenaline rush between those two programs, just yeah. going back and forth. And definitely they're trying to recapture some of that glory here at St. Croix Lutheran. I mean, obviously you're only playing for a section title this year, but it's still a big deal for these kids. Well, and I think, uh, I think it was covering St. Croix Lutheran. I think we did like one of the last games ever in the Metrodome. Oh, uh, that was really something. Kickoff here. Another real and short kick. Very short away goes to about the 20. Eagles take a bounce. And wrapped up at the 30 yard line. That was Monroe with the return. 6-1 um, sophomore. He was the one that caught the touchdown earlier on the fake punt. Here's another look at Art's run that set up that two yard touchdown by Hom. Yeah, he just got a lot of spacing and it looked like he was gonna uh, take it home and just at the very end there. Good good hustle by the Eagles though. He, I mean, he had a good tackle from behind that could have been messy and a penalty which would really would have made it worse at the time. Man in motion, you're on first down. And the Eagles get a little bit of yardage there. That is Saeed uh, Alassani. Uh, Sophomore running back for the Eagles. It would be big for the Eagles side to just be able to hang around with the Crusaders. They haven't actually had a close game yet this year in terms of points margin. We'll go over that in a second. Second down here. The handoff. Momentum stopped pretty quickly. That is uh, Alassani again. I see uh, Stieber was there as well. He had a couple, a couple big bodies up front for St. Croix. Yeah, they certainly do. They just got a nice push on that offensive line and just came right at him. Yeah, so for their first three games, Kennedy lost 48-13, 35-12, and 27 nothing. So you obviously don't want moral victories, but they're definitely competing here tonight. It's all of a sudden again up the middle. A few yards. It's going to be a fourth down again. Oh, they're definitely going to be heads up. <laughs> this time around. That is indeed the case. How many uh, fake punt plays are there in a team's repertoire? We might find out tonight since they've already done one. Well, you, you always got the, old, the direct snap to the up back. That's what they do. It's a fourth and three, so they don't have terribly far to go, but they are punting this one away. And it's fumbled. Well, they picked up. And a good return for the Crusaders, especially considering how that return started. And that's where we might have seen some of the field conditions coming into play. There's uh, Zach Longville. Oh, that was Zach with the return there. Third year starter. There's a decent amount of uh, helmet decals. 
having a good, having a good start to the season so far. And they'll line up here on first down at the 41 yard line. Two backs in the backfield. Looks like Longville's gonna keep it. And no gain. I thought the helmet decal thing might have actually been going away with COVID because I was seeing some games in college football with teams that traditionally had the helmet decal didn't have them and then I realized it was actually because those teams were struggling. <laughs> so they weren't getting the touchdowns and the sacks and those sorts of things that award those kinds of decals. Good job by Jesse Falk on the tackle. Second down here. And a pass is complete by Longville. That is Andy Rush with the catch. 6'5", senior receiver, so he's obviously played a few years here and he's been through uh, the tough 2019 season and probably really enjoying the success here tonight. 3-0 start to the season, as we mentioned. And kind of going back to those decals, St. Croix Lutheran's put up the points this season. 35-28 over Ridgefield, 20-6 over Southwest, and then 27-6 last week over Columbia Heights. So offense is kind of looking like it has in its glory days, putting up the numbers. Here we are on first down. It's a run. And the Eagles are ready for that one. Looks like they might have got it, judging by the uh, referee on the near side here. I apologize. I think I said first down, but it was actually fourth down, fourth and short, and we'll see if the refs give it to him. Nope, they're going to still about a yard to go. That's probably 50-50 on whether they go for it or not. They pretty much stopped Bloomington in their track, so then that... Uh, the big fake play, so it looks like they are going to go well, for they it. They are going for it. I mean, they're right here at midfield, so it's a logical spot to go for it. At Bloomington, you got to be aware of the hard count. And they still go with the run up the middle here on fourth down, and they get it. Hey, I'm on the hum on the cup carry. It's a traditional number eight running back number. Mm. A big fourth down conversion there, of course. And that's the kind of stuff they've been accustomed to doing here at St. Croix Lutheran, running that football right up the middle and making plays happen, wearing out defenses. And here they are, first down. And Eagles territory, a pass play, and it's good all the way down inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, Micah Bame. That was Longville completing the Micah Bame, senior tight end, six foot, 165 pounds. He just went streaking downfield, nice opening. And he was also the one that uh, returned the kickoff after Bloomington scored. That's right, so a couple good plays for him tonight. Great touch by Longville, too. Yeah, that was excellent timing, really good read, and a good tackle there by uh, Alassani for the Eagles. So they've had some good open field tackles tonight, kind of trying to keep the Crusaders off the board, kind of in check, even though right now it's looking like they're going to go up 14 7 here if they keep the momentum going. Short run here on first down. Number 33, Arndt on the carry. Tackled by number 27, Leighton Gabler for the Eagles. That was Arndt with a short run. Game of four on the play, second goal from the six-yard line for the Crusaders. Arndt has a touchdown catch this season, but he doesn't have any rushing TD, so this might be an opportunity for him. Yeah, Hom kind of uh, poached that last touchdown for him after he got that big 53-yard run to set him up. Yeah. So as we mentioned, Art getting his first touchdown the season coming in, he did not have one yet, but he did have a receiving touchdown before, as he mentioned. We're here on second down. 
Longville rolling out. Fires, bobbled, but complete for the touchdown. Yeah, um, with the receiving touchdown, great job by Longville, keeping that play yeah, alive. Yeah, great timing, waiting for his man, and receiver making a good play on that, hanging onto the ball. And I, th and I think once it got to the end of this play, there was a few players open. There was a couple. That was Sam Hom, the senior running back, making the play. A little extra point is good. Crusaders lead 14 to 7. Hom had one touchdown coming into this game. That's his second of the season in terms of touchdown grabs, but he had a couple rushing touchdowns as well. Another look at the play. Longville really is showing the ability to move around in the pocket. I mean, obviously he's made plays, with, tried to make plays with his legs in the running game as well. On some option top plays or trying to run around in the backfield, make something happen. 3-10 remaining in the first quarter. It's 14-7 Crusaders. Once again, back to receive for the Eagles. Number 22, Marquez Monroe. And number 25, Saeed Afsani. Kicking off for the Crusaders. Back goes to the Couple Eagles back to receive the kick. And this one's a little deeper. And the Eagles... Find a seam. A good patient running on the return. They were looking for a good opening there. That was Monroe with the return for the Eagles. The game of the week is supported by Inverell Fights Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's closer than you think. More information can be found at visitigh.com. It would be starting from the 38-yard line, which has kind of been about typical. They've started kind of middle of their own territory each drive. They have yet to get a first down. Their only touchdown came on a fake punt play. We can definitely talk about that again in a bit here. Short run for the Eagles. The Crusaders tie them up there. Only about a two-yard gain. His first hole was busted up and he had to kick it to the outside to, just to get those three yards. That was a good adjustment because the last drive they really just went up the middle all three, three times before punting. And clearly Crusaders have some size up front that's going to be a challenge for them. Yeah, two big D tackles. There's another handoff and run. This is Alasani again. And he gets about five on the play. Yeah, the opening, uh, I could, couldn't see who it was. Didn't get the tackle, but slowed him down just enough before his teammates could, uh, could come over and help out. Otherwise, he wouldn't slow him down. I think he would have busted off a, a long run. Well, the uh, crowd's starting to make a little bit of noise again. Of course, there's pretty strict limits due to COVID, how many people could be at the game. But once in a while, the crowd does get a little bit, a little bit loud. It sounds like a high school crowd. Short game here. Biggest crowd I've seen this year at a football game. It does feel a little bit bigger than the last game I was at. Steber was the first one there. Steber, my apologies. The uh, junior uh, defensive lineman They're in there to make the play. Brings up fourth and one. They're going for it, and we like might have to it. take a look at this one. Well, they're not even. They're saying they got it. Yep, not even gonna measure. Steber there again. 
You see his good size there. Yeah, and the Eagles, they, they, they're showing they're not afraid to challenge that front four of the Crusaders. I mean, they got that size, as we mentioned before, especially, especially Stever. I mean, 6'1", 265 pounds. I mean, that's, that's a big high school kid. They'll go with four receivers here on first down. Incomplete pass on the swing out. I know the quarterback's trying to get it out there quick, but you can take another half second, make sure you put the throw where the your receiver can catch it. Indeed, it does look really rushed, and it's it's the kind of things you don't want to be doing because you mess up your own execution. You you shoot yourself with the foot offensively and can't get the ball downfield. Second down here. And it's incomplete. Now they're about 0 for 3 on those passes now. Yeah, is that having some trouble throwing in the ball? And even that one, that looked pretty rushed as well, I think. I mean, he did have some guys in his face coming at him, but it still looked like he had enough time to throw. They'll bring up third and 10. Crusaders trying to get off the field here. Crusaders showing three defensive backs. Three linebackers actually want to come towards the linebackers. And this pass is incomplete, bobbled. But I mean, he had his guy and had a hand on it, but just couldn't hang on. Yeah, that one should have been caught. But he did, he kind of rifled that one at him. <laughs> really did. Well, that would bring up fourth and 10, and the Eagles are here to punt. This one will be a punt. They tried to fake earlier and succeeded quite well. The return by the Eagles, and there is a fumble. We'll see what the result is in a second. I think Bloomington got that. That was Lucas Blomquist on the return. There is a fumble, and it is confirmed as being recovered by the Eagles. And they just got right in there on the play. If we see the replay, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But they just they saw that ball come loose, and they were just there on time. And you got you got to wrap up once you get into traffic. Cover the cover the ball up. Well, Matthew, we would like to welcome in all the viewers tuning in on BEC TV in Bloomington. Sharing the broadcast with them so they can see their team play tonight. And that team's competing quite well tonight here on first down, a short run. Of course, early in the game, they really started that first quarter off with the bang on that fake punt for a touchdown. But that is the end of the first quarter. It is 14 to seven, St. Croix Lutheran. So we'll be back in a moment. And we're back here for the second quarter. The Crusaders are leading 14 to seven over the Bloomington Kennedy Eagles. And we do welcome our viewers again from Bloomington that are uh, viewing this game tonight. That's uh, over in my neck of the woods. Well, Game of the Week is supported by Midwest One Bank. You're the one. More information can be found at MidwestOne.Bank. Well, these two teams are in different sections, but uh, there's actually quite a bit of crossover in terms of like local teams. So Kennedy's in the same section as Henry Sibley and St. Thomas Academy, so a couple of our local teams. So 
chance. Could be crossing paths again. Of course, St. Thomas Academy is having a monster season. They're three and zero right now, and they were a state runner up last year, and they're looking as tough as ever. Yeah, and Bloomington Kennedy was one of the 5A schools, and St. Croix 3A, so it's play, playing up. Bigger school. Second quarter getting underway here finally, and we got the Eagles lining up with the ball in Crusader territory. And it's a run. And he gets by everybody. That is a touchdown for the Eagles. That was al Asadi just breaking through the defense. Starting off the first, or the second quarter big on the first play of the second quarter. So Zesh had a fake. And al Asadi just burst through that defense. And it'll bring up the extra point and a chance to tie. We're going to have a flag on there, possibly running into the kicker, but the low, low kick was good. Even things up now, 14 all. I know it sounds cliche, but this is why you play the game. You can look at the stats, you can look at the records. We'll look at the call of the field quick, actually. And that was on St. Croix Lutheran. Yeah, so it'll be assessed on the kickoff here. and Might be able to pin St. Croix pretty deep now. And they definitely get that chance. There's a look at the extra point. Yeah, that trip at the end, that's a no-no. We definitely had a chance to block it, but then like you have to kind of let that play go once you know you're not going to get it. Yeah, that was Longville too. I don't know if you want your quarterback diving in there uh, trying to block kicks, do you? No, it doesn't seem like the smartest <laughs> decision. But it's typical of 3A football is you're going to play two ways. So it's not a surprise from that standpoint. Oh, somebody just walked in with either two coffees or two hot chocolates here. You know, at St. Croix, they used to serve the best hot chocolate here back when the concession stands were, were still open. Perfect for a night like tonight. That's a great thing. I guess you'll just have it's, to wait till next year. I guess so. If you make it that far. <laughs> Hope we all do. And the Eagles kick off here. Big return for the Crusaders. Up to the 36 yard line. For our viewers that don't know, Matthew's a new announcer for us at Town Square Television. Uh, this is just your second game ever, right? It is. My second game ever broadcasting. And you did the, your first one a couple weeks ago at, at Simley. How'd that one go for you? Did you get any, did you get any feedback from friends or family? Any hate mail? Uh, no hate mail, just, so that's a good sign. Just the one I sent you? Oh, that's right. Oh, wait a minute. I think I missed that one. I quarantine all my mail now, so I don't open up, open it for a few months. Yeah, it's probably best to quarantine your mail in the 2020 during these unprecedented times. And a short run here for the Crusaders. That was Zach Arndt. The senior back. So four yard run there and Crusaders hoping just to kind of get back in business after giving up a pretty sudden touchdown to open the second quarter. That's kind of the way the Eagles have scored tonight. It's been quick strikes. Fake punt and then a big touchdown run. Second down here. And an out to Arndt. He's got some room. So Longville really connecting with Arndt quite a bit tonight in the offense. And we've been calling Arndt's names for a long time here at St. Croix. They've had these on maybe two or three come through the, the, pro, the school here. 
I think I saw his dad actually helping out the chain gang down there tonight. Well, that's the case. He's hoping to keep his dad pretty busy, keep <laughs> moving the chains on this drive. A short run for Hom. Tackled by Eagles Barber. That was Barber with the tackle for the Eagles. The Crusaders moving the ball here, early second quarter. Just first couple minutes, Eagles open with a touchdown to tie. Longville is scrambling. And he's brought down. He's got to be careful. He's just carrying that uh, ball out there like a loaf of bread. Yeah, he's carrying it kind of loose. There, he did He did, did wrap up at the end. And that was Christopher Martin. He's 6'6", 245 pounds. That's not a guy you want to be carrying a ball loosely around. That could have easily been a fumble, and it would have been six in that case. Now it's third and 17. And they are going with the four receiver set here. Longville from the shotgun. But they're gonna run it instead. Jeez. And he breaks a few tackles, veers around everybody, and it's enough for a first down. Unbelievable. That was Hob. That and he, that first one, it looked like he almost got tackled by his hand. And he got swung, he got spun around, stayed on his feet, kept going, got spun around a second time. I don't think I've ever seen somebody almost get tackled by their hand. Well, that was very unusual the way that play started. That's right there's what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, it looked like he maybe had his sleeve by his wrist and then almost a near horse collar. His balance rating's 99 <laughs> overall. <laughs> That's for sure. It, the spin moves, they did look very mad in this. <laughs> well, I'd like to welcome everybody tuning in on Facebook as well. We've got a couple comments. Coach Wenlin is in watching the broadcast of the Go Crusaders. Can't wait to see the, his basketball team on the court later this year. And uh, Richard Troth, he's it's a great commentary, guys. And he says, hi, all the way from Australia. So wow. Do you think, do you ever think in your second broadcast you'd be international? No, I never, never thought about that. Well, now, you, now you got some bragging rights when you go home tonight. That's right. No, no sleeping on the couch for you tonight. No. Be <laughs> over Twitter and Facebook bragging it up. <laughs> First down, and the Crusaders pick up a short gain. That was Arndt, a three yard gain. Balls on the 28, of course Arndt has been very much a go-to guy tonight. But the guy that really sparked this drive was Hom a few minutes ago, or a few moments ago, I should say, on a third and 17, just running, zipping through that defense. Yeah, we got players shaking up players there for Bloomington. That's Lumen Ku Kumaji. Yeah, Kumaji was the one that was in on the tackle, too. I didn't quite see exactly what happened to him. Kind of the way they was holding his arm, looked like he might have had a shoulder stinger. So we got a second and 12 here. The pitch out. And the Crusaders get a nice gain on that one. Let's see where the chain gangs and the refs mark it. It is good for a first down. That was a 12 yard gain. Yeah, Arndt on the carry. It again. was. Nice sweet play there by Arndt. 
So he's got to be closing in on 100 already for the night. Yeah, he really needs. Ooh. Really looks like he's having a 100 yard night for sure right now. A little trickier to keep stats when you're broadcasting from outside instead of in a press box. Can't write with the pen because it doesn't work in the cold. Got to bring a pencil instead. And when the Crusaders are piling up rushing yards, you also need to bring a calculator. Oh, no, we're good. I get to basically tonight. have one in my brain. And that pass is incomplete. That was Longville trying to find Rosh in the corner of the end zone. So it will bring up third and goal from the 10. Oof. Probably should have had that, but he, see, he wanted the call. He was kind of getting wrapped up around his legs at the same time, but I think that's a good no call. That was. He, he got some good separation, and he had a chance to make that play, and that was good coverage by the Eagles. A run here on third down. Short of the goal line. A two yard gain, so it brings up fourth down. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. They are lining up to go for it. It's fourth and seven. Here's a handoff. Longville rolling out, fires into the end zone. It could play a couple of Eagles there. Could have been picked. Yeah, it looked like Bloomquist got popped pretty good at the end of that. That's right, and one player was motioning to the refs, like, is there uh, going to be a flag? So there it is at the end. Yeah, that is a pretty big pop right there. But that pins the Eagles deep. They're going to be starting from their own seven-yard line. That was just an interesting play there to roll to the, the, the near side where you don't have a ton of room to work. That's right. And the Eagles trying to capitalize here on the turnover on downs. They get a long run here on first down. Second and one. It was a nine-yard carry there. That was Joe Carrada with the tackle on that play. We were looking at the touchdown attempt again. Couldn't get the pass to go in the end zone. And as you mentioned before, Bloomquist was hit pretty hard in that one. Here on second down, another big run for the Eagles. Yeah, they're starting to find some holes now. Alasani again, Carrada with the tackle. That moves the chains. Yeah, look at that. They're just opening some big holes for him to run through. Yeah, it looked like 52 had a, a great block to spring that. Isaac Grahams. Kennedy coming in winless, but looking to change the fortunes of their season here and try to get their first win. They're tied here in the second quarter at St. Croix Lutheran. The handoff here on first down. And this time the Crusaders are able to collapse on Alasani and keep him from going much of anywhere. Just a couple yards. Five yard gain to be exact. Yeah, that time they just stuffed the middle and he couldn't go anywhere. They're lining up three receivers here on the left-hand side here on second and five. Another handoff. 
breaking a couple of tackles. The Eagles are going to move the chains. That was Dion Barber, senior running back. Didn't look easy to pull down. No, that's a that's a tough kid, and they move the chains up to the 47. 4:43 left here in the first half. The clock winding. Crusaders kind of packing the line a little bit here. They have four up front. Linebackers are in kind of close. Probably not a bad idea to start doing that. Um, Eagles have been hurting them on the run, and they really haven't done anything on the pass other than that fake punt. No, they really have. There's something about Zesha's approach tonight. He's really was rushing passes every time he's thrown. So they really need to kind of crowd that line a little bit and just go go after the ball carrier. There's Mr. Arndt right there in the yellow and black. So I think this might be the first negative play in this quarter for the Eagles. Maybe the entire game, actually. Bobbled snap or handoff. And Crusaders wrap him up. That was an interesting play. I think that, that bobble off the quarterback's hands to the running back. Oh, that could have been costly right there. Such bobbles it. The running back bobbles it. That was Barber, I believe. Could have been a lot worse. So that brings up third down, third down and 10. So they actually gained a yard on that play. Crusaders going to the four man front. Linebackers coming in a little close again. It could be a run, it could be a pass, we'll see. It is a pitch out to Alassani. And he's wrapped up for a short gain. On uh, St. Croix has the ball, but. Yeah, they're arguing they had the ball. I guess they do. The ref signal they have the ball. We'll have to take a look at this again. Yeah, Bloomquist got there first. A little bit of a, yeah, a the size contact mis there. mismatch, but he stays with it. And yeah, that was a hand in those there. aren't that. Uh, that was. He pulled it out and it kind of bounced right to him. Great team effort. Big play for the Crusaders and they got 252 left so they could go in on a scoring drive. Game of the week is supported by Inver Grove Heights Schools. Inspire, innovate, excel, a community commitment. More information can be found at isd199.org. St. Croix Lutheran takes over at the 48 yard line. And it's a run here on first down. Already inside Eagles territory after the fumble recovery. Take another look. Ball, the knee is almost down before, but it, it does come out. It was great timing by Art there on the strip. And you want to make that effort at every opportunity because you never know if you can get that fumble. Pass deep by Longville. That's double coverage. Then it's waved incomplete. Intended for Bloomquist. Blomquist, excuse me. And we got uh, Hom, he's on the sidelines here. Uh, hasn't hasn't been in for a bit, and he's talking to one of the athletic trainers. So he's kind of he was motioning to his neck. I don't know if he got pinched a nerve or something. I see that. Yeah, there was a flag at the end of that play. We'll see what the ref says. And it is holding. 10 yard penalty at a first down for the Crusaders. 2.13 left here in the second quarter. First and 10 at the 36 yard line. Longville pitches it to Art. The Eagles wrap him up quickly. Under 
There's Ham kind of getting some work in. We'll see if he's able to return. Had some big plays in this game, especially that third down 17 on the last drive. Set them up for a chance to score. Second and five here. Longville back to pass. That you probably got a throw flag on it. Hart was covered well to reach over. There is a flag. And of course, the Kennedy defensive back, that's Marquise Monroe trying to challenge. Was that Monroe earlier that laid out Bloomquist? I believe that was. So, so this time it's up. Yeah. So we have two penalties offsetting. An eligible man downfield and oh, pass interference. So there's the pass interference. You can see he's trying to come back to make the play, and Monroe just kind of runs through him. It's hard to say in the fourth week of the season, you know, with the change of the schedule with COVID that there's still kinks to work out, but because it started so late in the year, there probably is still kinks that are kind of unusual for this point in the season. A short run here for the Crusaders. Game of the week is supported by Ultimate Carpet and Upholstery Cleaning, the cleaner, greener carpet cleaner. More information can be found at ultimatecarpet.us. 122 left here in the first half. It's tied at 14. Third down and three for the Crusaders when we resume here. Ball at the 29 yard line. The Crusaders have been able to move the ball pretty well all night. Every drive they've gotten into at least the red zone. Of course, they scored twice. Had turnover downs once on a pass play that was broken up by the Eagles. A little bit of a hard hit there too in the end zone that kind of broke up the play as well. But Kennedy's been able to hang in there. They got fake punt play for a touchdown. And they got a touchdown run to open this quarter. So here's the Crusaders. And it's going to be a run. And it should be good for a first down, and it is. So they move the chains. And just move the ball down to the 21-yard line. So nine yard run by the Crusaders as we're winding down toward a minute. Ball at the 22. Longville back to pass. Incomplete. Well, let him, yeah, let him just a little too much. But it does stop the clock though. That is the one benefit of that play. They can kind of collect themselves and I know, looking at uh, Andy Rash, 6'5", uh, do you maybe throw a jump ball to him? I think that makes sense. You have the height, you have the height advantage with the Eagles defensive backs. They certainly could go with that, and we'll see what they do here on second down, and it's a run. We have a timeout. That was Han, so good news, Han is back in the game. His shoulder or his neck was being worked on by the trainer. Probably not gonna feel any better sitting on the sideline, so. No, it's better just to get back in and play. Look. So Falls leading the section right now, the 4-0 record. Yeah, St. Croix Lutheran, Breck, Minneapolis, Roosevelt, Lake City, and Ridgefield. Of course, St. Croix Lutheran played Ridgefield early in the year. That was a close game, 35 to 28. Canna Falls, a familiar playoff foe for the Crusaders. I believe they uh, 
lost to Canada Falls in the section tournament last year. And that's a matchup that's gone back and forth over the years. Obviously, there's times where St. Croix had the advantage over Cannon Falls. Here we are on third down. Longville pressured, can't find anybody, and has to throw it incomplete. Longville. Nearly could have been picked off. There was an eagle diving there for the ball. That looked like they were trying to set up Rosh. Because he was looking that way, and then the pocket just collapsed on him. So the Eagles got nice pressure there and really disrupted what they wanted to do. Brings up fourth and eight, 48 seconds left. So they can get a short completion here, they can still get another play or two. He has three receivers on the right, one on the left. On the rollout he finds his man. That was Rush. Right, time will stop as they advance the chains. So brings it down to 41 seconds. First and goal from the seven. So they have a chance. They could probably run two to three plays, depending on how they manage it. Run, run their classic option to the left, but they're going to go with the pass. And here is the pass, and it's good. Touchdown, Crusaders. 30 seconds left. Big touchdown play right over the middle. So this time Longville finds his man. And he had to scramble back there a little bit again, but you know, was able to kind of take his time, look for an opening and found it. It almost looked like he was actually gonna take off and run with that thing at first, and then he kind of set up the throw and, and here's the extra point, it's good. That is Dexter Dub with the kick. Make it 21 14 Crusaders. 30 seconds left. We'll take a look at the touchdown here again. He's able to find big Art in the back of the end zone. Yeah, big play for Art. Art called his name a lot tonight. Really just been kind of go to guy in different ways, running, catching. Really. Got himself a good position there in the back of the end zone and was ready for that throw. And has a, uh, had the biggest play of the game for St. Croix with that 50-yard run that set up the two-yard TD run. So it's good that he got paid back here. It's Longville again, it, you know, he was able to take his time. And, you know, he was getting pressure on that drive. So it was really, you know, good presence of mind to just, you know, drop back, take your time, not get too worried about the state of the pocket and just be ready to make the play. And that's what happened. Crusaders getting ready to kick off. Eagles have 30 seconds left here and they have to try to make something happen before we go to halftime. Here's a kick at the swib. And it bounces out of bounds. There's gonna be a penalty on that one. So the Eagles will start at the 35 yard line because of the kick and penalty. That's kind of about where the Eagles have started all night. They've kind of started somewhere around the 40, 30 yard line. They really only have a couple first downs tonight. Well, looks like the Eagles are opting to have them re-kick it. Oh, it appears they are. And on the one hand, that makes sense. But you want the best opportunity you can get, especially with a little bit of time left. It's always nice to see a team that wants to actually compete at the end of a half instead of kind of just kneel and go into the locker room. Are you referring to the 98 Vikings? No, I, I, I could possibly be referring to them. Some things will irk Minnesotans forever. <laughs> and here's a kick, it's another swib. 
And this one is going to bounce out of bounds, and we have another flag. A couple years ago, did you see the Maple Grove St. Michael game where Maple Grove had like three or four onside kicks to come back and beat St. Michael in the playoffs? No, I did not. It was all over the news, YouTube, Twitter for a few days. Pretty wild. It was the craziest thing ever. They were down three scores, and they executed two to three onside kicks to come back and win that game. You never know what, what might happen with a kicking game. Well, this time the Eagles will start at the 40. They have 30 seconds to work with. And they have three receivers, three on the left, one on the right. And they're just going to run the ball. Though a big fake by Zesh. I mean, he had the whole throwing motion there, but that was uh, Alassani with the short run up the middle. Gain of six. That kind of tells you uh, where they're uh, at with their confidence for the passing game. Yeah, it's a little bit surprising from one statistical standpoint. Zesh actually has three touchdown passes this year, but of note, he also has three, or he has six interceptions. That certainly is going to be concerning. And Jesse Falk has also been playing quarterback a little bit for the Eagles, and he has three picks this year. So it's been it's been a tough go overall for the passing game with the Eagles. Second and four here, 23 seconds left in the half. Just from the shotgun, handoff and run, Alasani. Short gain. It'll bring up third down as the clock's winding. We'll see if they try to run another play or if they're just going to go into halftime. And that will bring us to halftime. Yeah, we'll take a look at the scoring plays from this first half. This is that fake punt. Start things off, Martin to Monroe. Yeah, beats one man there and he's gone. Perfectly executed play. That was the one passing play that's worked for Kennedy tonight. And this was the 53 yard run by Arndt. And that really set up the Crusaders nicely right around the goal line. That led to this two yard run by Hom. I'm punching it in like you said. That made it seven to seven. Then Longville rolling out. Bobbled, but Hom hauls it in. But we weren't done there yet. Kennedy strikes back to start the second quarter. Alasani with that big run, that ties the game at 14. But then late in the half, Longville finds Arndt. And the Crusaders go back ahead. So an entertaining first half. Very good first half. And that will do it for the first half. Uh, we'll go, go to break and come back after this and see what the second half has in store.
And we're back, getting ready for the third quarter. St. Croix Lutheran leading Bloomington Kennedy 21 to 14. And it was a very entertaining first half. Be would you consider the records? One team's three, no, the other's 0 and three. You don't always know if that's going to be a close game or not. But we've had a close one here. Kennedy hanging in with the Crusaders. Yeah, it's a lot closer than uh, it appeared on paper. But a couple big plays by Bloomington Kennedy has kept them into this game. Kind of a dagger for him to give up that touchdown real late. And was that? Was that off of a long drive off the, that fumble? That was. Okay. So that's, that makes a big difference too. A big defensive play there. It set up great field position. Otherwise, I mean, they would have punted in St. Croix Lutheran. They could have had a much longer drive in that case, and who knows if they would have scored or not. Yeah, it might have, might have ran out of time. The other aspect is Kennedy punted. They've already went for it once on a fake punt makes you wonder if they're going to try it again at some point especially if they're in the, keep staying in this game they got to find some ways to get momentum because they're clearly not getting it through the passing game they're relying on the run and the time will not be on their side as this game continues well longwell had ha, has had a few errant passes and uh, if that continues in this half they they might be able to pick one off yeah, that would be problematic. This is David of Ido Rizzo kicking off for the Eagles. We're underway here in the third quarter. Crusaders on the return. A nice return here up toward midfield. It was Blomquist on the return. Yeah. He's had some, some good returns tonight. I don't feel like with his size, he can just kind of hide behind the blockers a little bit. Yeah, he was really able to get some good position there and looked like he might have actually squirted it out of one of those holes and actually get a few more yards, but getting up to the 38, it's a good start here for the second half. And the way St. Croix's been driving the ball, they could probably just go on a nice long drive and really kind of solidify their grip on this game. Here we are in first down. Longville pitches. That's Hom on about a five yard gain for the Crusaders. Hey, he's a real upright runner until he gets close to contact. And he does a nice job of protecting the ball there too. Here on second down, a short run that's Eagles bring him down quickly at the line of scrimmage. So a little momentum there for the Eagles on that first down. Rolling out is Longville, and the pitch. And another run for the Crusaders. This time it's Hom with the run. I don't know how Longville got that one off. That was about as late as you could wait to pitch That, that pretty much was. I mean, I was almost a little bit surprised that there wasn't a turnover on that play. Couldn't wait much longer to pitch that one. His defender's just right there. I mean, he was pretty much right there, ready to just take that ball. I'm able to make something happen. It brings up fourth and one, and they are going to go for it. They're at the 48-yard line of the Eagles. Two backs in the backfield. Here's the run. And that should be enough for the first down. They're not even going to bother measuring. They move the chains. So defeating to the defense when you do what you're supposed to do and stop them on three downs. And and then the team just goes for it and picks it up. It really is a big mental game. I mean, he saw the Eagles crowding the line. I mean, they were ready to, you know, go make something happen here, get the ball back at nice field position. Not so. Longville with the throw. I don't know. And it's incomplete. They're, I'm guessing they're going with uncatchable, but Monroe yeah, just, just <laughs> yeah, ran Monroe him over. Him down pretty hard. Just ran him right over. 
You could, and you could hear that from was that. intended for Arndt. I mean, it was. It would have been a really difficult catch, but Monroe did give him a really solid push there. Maybe a little more on the hard side than just solid. Uh, no, that looked like that was catchable. That, that should have been a flag. Yeah, on second thought, you're right. That really, that was a catchable ball. Longville is going to take it himself, but then he decides to pitch, and then it's a fumble. Art covers it up. It's like Longville wanted to do both run with the ball, and no, I'm going to pitch it instead. I think once he got that pressure on him, he decided it might be a better option. <laughs> better option to have Arndt on the bottom of about five Eagles players. The play did not go as planned. It brings up third and 14. So after that big fourth down play, now this drive is in danger of stalling. And here's a run for the Crusaders, bottled up by the Eagles. On the, hear him yell and punt. A sensible option at this point, fourth and 14. From the Eagles, 47 yard line. Eight forty in county. It's Marquez Monroe that's back deep for the Eagles to return the punt. Well, here's the Crusaders. They are punting on their first punt of the night. And it rolls to the 15-yard line. Yeah, a little bit of a favorable bounce. Yep. Game of the week is supported by Inver Girl Fights Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's closer than you think. More information can be found at visitigh.com. So a good spot by the Crusaders. Eagles will start from their own 15 yard line, but they're down a touchdown. They've been able to respond once the Crusaders got momentum in this game. Of course, they started the scoring, the Eagles did with that fake punt. Here's a run here on first down. A few yards up the middle. Isaiah Steber. Steber with the tackle on that play as the Crusaders crowded the middle there. Eagles have had some luck running up the middle. Of course, they had the big run play to open the second quarter. That was Alassani busting through the line, tying up the game 14-14, but then, of course, the Crusaders were able to score late in the first half to take the lead. I formation here. Here's the pitch, gets around. Can't get very far, barely gets back to the line of scrimmage if even that. That was Monroe again. That was Monroe. I feel like he hasn't gone down on first contact at all tonight. No, he really hasn't. But to your credit the Crusaders, I mean, if they don't get that first tackle, there's another guy right there ready to make it. They've really only had a couple defensive plays they've truly blown tonight. And he still didn't go down there. He went out of bounds. So it will be third and eight. I formation again here. The Eagles strongly favoring the run, and they are going to run here. Alasani with the short gain is going to be short of the first down. Hard to imagine they would do anything other than punt here. Yeah. You would think that uh, with Monroe being as hard as it is to bring down that, it would translate into more success running it, but just really hasn't had the, the holes. No, it really. They've had opportunities with their backs trying to make plays, especially Monroe, but they just, they haven't been able to sustain a drive. Their scores are coming to big plays. And here's another big play potentially here on this punt return. 
That's Blomquist all the way, actually down to the first down marker of the previous drive, down to the 24 yard line. So big play by Blomquist on the return that he was just dragged down at the end there. Yeah, no flag. The coaches are hot on the St. Croix side. It was, there was a lot going on in that play where it was kind of the way Blomquist, you never want to have to catch a ball like on, on a run. And then here, kind of kind of a horse collar, kind of not. Yeah, he was able to slip some tackles and then, yeah, just pull down at the end. And, yeah, it, it looked like it could have been pretty close to a horse collar. But not quite. Short run here on first down. Look, it looked like one was kind of in, in on the collar and the other one was on the side. We'll take another look. You got one guy on his shoulder, dragging the shoulder pad, then his arm comes around. A good thing that his leg didn't get stuck in the grass. Man, he's taking some big hits tonight. It pops back up. Our Crusaders really showing some physical toughness tonight. Try to extend their lead here. Second down run. Eagles swarm to meet him. Crusaders not quite in the red zone yet. Actually, that will cross into the red zone, so it gets him to the 19. Barber and Gabler with the tackles. Third down and six inside five minutes here in the third quarter. Crusaders by seven, trying to extend their lead here at home. Kennedy has been able to hang around in this one tonight. Well, most of their passes have gone to the edge lately. They've had some luck going with their tight end over the middle. And they're gonna go to the edge, and they get a touchdown with it. That is Longville connecting with Art. Yeah, Rosh, I believe. Yeah, they, they bid on that play huge. Like you mentioned before, they've been able to work the outside really effective, and tonight, Logville finds his man again. He can make it a two-score lead. I mean, look, he just fires it. He knows where he's going to be, and he gets the touchdown. And I don't, I couldn't tell if that was a design fake or if he was, that was his first read and then he didn't go to it because it looks like it's a oh, weird kick there. It was a very strange kick, no good. So it remained 20 and 14. I apologize. I think I said armed on that play, but that is Andy Rosh that caught that. It's 6'5", 180 pounds. I mean, that's that's a guy you want to go to Yeah. In that kind of a situation. But had he, had he thrown to the running back, I think that would have been intercepted by it. There's an eagle player right there. It could have had a costly turnover if you don't pick the right guy, but I mean, look at me, Ross just got out there in space. There's a nice pump fake by Longville. It's wide open for that play. That corner and the safety were not on the, on the same page there. So that puts the Crusaders up by two scores here at 27-14. 4.33 left in the third quarter. Largest margin in this game tonight. It's been back and forth otherwise. Kennedy took a lead early. St. Croix came back and tied. They took a 14 to seven lead, but Kennedy came back and tied. Then St. Croix took a lead going into the half. And they kick off here. Kennedy returns a short kick, the 30. And I'll get wrapped up there. That no, was Rishon Walker, sophomore receiver, returning the kick. And the Eagles will start at the 30-yard line. Game Fort Week is supported by Midwest One Bank. You're the one. More information can be found at MidwestOne.Bank. Eagles down by a couple scores. It looks like they're not gonna go away from the run. They have a couple backs in the backfield, only one receiver out. And here's a run. 
up the middle, just can't get that far. Crusaders closing in on that. And that, that's a problem they're going to be facing now. If, if they're too predictable, St. Croix is just going to capitalize. Well, and if they do try to, you know, run themselves back into this game, that uh, 16 minutes of game clock left is going to tick off pretty fast. That was Alassani trying to spin through the St. Croix defense and just couldn't get very far, just a yard. It's kind of milky they got there first. They're going in with the shotgun formation. And now a big run for the Eagles. A Little bit of a misdirection there. Yep, Monroe. That was Monroe, and the ball is loose. We'll see what happens. Kind of hard like to see it opposite sideline. Yeah, St. Like Croix claiming they have it. So we see where Monroe was hard to take down on first contact. It is St. Croix Lutheran football. And St. Croix almost, players almost held him up while the other ones were stripped the ball free. A big run by Monroe. I mean, they, he got into Crusader territory and it coughs up the ball. And with, with how quickly the last run got blown dead, I'm sure the coach wanted this one blown dead before the ball got stripped out. Take a look here. They can see spinning. He's trying to get that extra yards, and then a couple of Crusaders close it in and strip the ball. Yeah, that was Rosh that stripped it out, and maybe Bloomquist that uh, came away with it. Roshan and Brandon uh, Demolin also kind of helping in there, look like. That was, uh, was that a, were they running Wildcat on that one or just a direct snap to them? It looks like they faked a pitch to one back and then pitched it to Monroe. It long for rolling out, but he is sacked. At Longville, he likes to roll out of the pocket for his passes, but yeah. they've been getting good, good pressure on the edges tonight. Yeah, Kennedy read that well, and it's a big loss, 11 yards, second and 21. And here is the last play with the fumble, full speed. It beats a couple of guys, and that's, it's classic. You, you try to fight for those extra yards, but you take that risk of losing the football when you do that. I think that I think that would have been a, a tough one to blow dead before that. That that fumble happened really quick. Yeah, he's still standing. It's awfully tough from that vantage point. That was armed with a short run. Well bring up third and long. Eighteen yards ago that hasn't phased the Crusaders tonight. They went for a third and seventeen with their running play. That was Hom kind of going through the spin cycle. They're making <laughs> the impress impressive run of it. I think he nearly tackled himself actually and still got up on his feet, got the first down. So can't ride off the Crusaders on the third and 18, that's for sure. Two minutes left here in the quarter. He rolls out. Longville fires downfield. He has his guy. And it's Art with the first down grab along the sidelines. 23-yard connection there. And roll Longville out. rolling out, looking for time, looking for who he wants downfield, and he finds Arndt again. Rollout worked well for him, even though he was heavily pursued. Huge, huge play. Good job on the cornerback there for not following through on that big hit. and Probably would have been a late hit, tacking on 15 yards on top of the play. So smart decision there. Indeed it was, and here's a pitch on first down. It's Hom running. And he gets about four or five yards in the play, probably four. Gain of two to be exact. Kind of over there on the far sideline by Kennedy. And even Kennedy has a nice crowd tonight. I think this is the best visiting crowd I've seen so far. It may help that St. Croix Lutheran has a small visitor section, but. Yeah. Well, so South St. Paul traveled pretty well over to Simley. 
when we did that game. Indeed, that one also had a good turnout. Did Hastings in the opener, that was a good turnout over at Sibley. Or excuse me, Sibley. Sibley. Short run by the Crusaders here on second down. Clock winding inside a minute here in the third quarter. The Crusaders are in a good spot. I mean, they could really just take their time in this drive and just milk the clock. Down inside of 40 seconds. It's third and eight. Ball at the 38 yard line. St. Croix Lutheran leading 27 to 14. Longville's gonna set up from the shotgun and he's done a lot of scrambling in the backfield tonight. He throws. And this one's caught by, no it's not caught. Blomquist, he looked like he was gonna have his hands on it. Good position. Couldn't bring it in. Slow so luck for Blomquist there. 11.9 seconds left in the quarter. Starting downfield, he's right in front of the defensive back. And Smith all over him. It was Elijah Smith, yeah, he's just, you know, right there on the coverage. I mean, good coverage by him, he's in a good spot. And that was just enough to prevent the completion. Fourth and eight for the Crusaders. This far downfield makes perfect sense to go for it. Longville is pursued. And he's wrapped up and sacked. He'll turn over on downs here at the end of the quarter. Jesse Falk, senior linebacker, 5'11". A little trash talking going on at the end of the play. Yep, you can see that coming. I think Longville pointed at the scoreboard. Big play. Lucky there's no penalty with that. You know, that was, a, was kind of some obvious trash talking there. Time for a one more play in the third quarter. 4.3 seconds left. Eagles down by two scores. Yeah, Longville reminded them too. And it's a run. This is Alasani, and he might get the first down on that. Looks like it's going to be a nine yard gain instead as we wrap up the third quarter. Yeah, it looked like he had a pretty good stiff arm on Longville at the end of that run. Well, they are giving him the first down. Okay, push. That will do it for the third quarter. St. Croix Lutheran leading Bloomington Kennedy 27 14. We'll be back in a minute. And we're back here in the fourth quarter. Get a St. Croix Lutheran ahead by a couple scores over the Bloomington Kennedy Eagles. Eagles coming in here at 0-3 on the season, but you wouldn't know it by the way they played in a lot of ways. They came out with a banger early on a fake punt that turned into a touchdown. And then they opened the second quarter with a touchdown run, so they've been hanging around all night. And they have the ball here to start the fourth quarter, so there's a chance they could kind of close the gap here. And it's been a one-score game most of the night. Yeah, the the kind of the issue that they're facing is that they they've only scored on the big play, you know, the the, the long fake uh, punt, and then it was a long 37-yard run by Alisani, and they haven't been able to have those like long sustaining drives and then put it into the end zone. So, and it takes it takes a toll on your defense on the flip side. Here's a run here up the middle. This one's going to be about 20 yards. And that was Barber running with the ball. Again, I think we mentioned earlier, Barber's a cousin of Tyler Johnson, former Gopher. The Gophers, of course, are playing tonight. And he's got uh, a little bit more of a fullback build to him. He does. A little small, a <laughs> little low to the ground always helps. Definitely Toby, bulky. Toby said a college fullback. We got so. Yeah, he kind of has that look. What do you think he could squat with those thighs? I mean, that's, that looks like somebody that could squat high 200s or more easily, I'd say. Oh, probably four, 500 probably. So, <laughs> right, so we're talking 
200. Probably. Alexis probably. could probably do 200. <laughs> They're going to be talking it over. Well, Game of the Week is supported by Invergrove Heights Schools. Inspire, innovate, excel, a community commitment. More information can be found at isd199.org. The Eagles with a big run to open the fourth quarter. We mentioned before they really haven't had sustained drives. This is almost like the closest thing they've had to one. They've had a couple first down runs. If they could string together a couple more, we could have a one score ball game again. I think before this drive, they really only had two or three first downs the entire night. Well, and if you're watching and enjoying the broadcast, we will be back here at St. Croix on Monday to, for some volleyball coverage against Holy Angels. So it'll be a great premier matchup. Here's the Eagles on first down. A short pickup on the ground. That's Monroe again with the ball. It's been a healthy dose of Monroe and Alassani and Barber kind of mixing up in the backfield all night. Monroe with a gang of Crusaders hanging off him to finally bring him down. Another handoff to Monroe. Get some space. The backfielder's got flag. We'll see what that's about in a second. It's probably holding in that that area. Yeah, there's a sinker player. Oh, it looks like there's a sinker player down. Is that Hom? Yeah, kick. Yeah, well, he's been on the sidelines trying to get that calf stretched out. So, you know, when it gets cold like this, you don't always get enough water intake and. That's right. So you got 34 on the right side of your screen with the hold. Yep, there's that trip right there for the, essentially the hold, but I mean, he just tripped him up. And, and Monroe looked that. like he was getting ready to juke out Bloomquest, but with the, with the size advantage, you should just run him over. It was the kind of thing you really have to do. It's a second and 15 now because of that penalty. Pushes the Eagles out of the red zone. I formation. Is that just back to pass? Rolls out, incomplete, and nearly could have been picked. Wait, that was the, f the first pass attempt since. Sometime in the second quarter, maybe? Yeah, Zesh has been ultra concerned about throwing the ball. What he has, he's been really quick. That was actually the most time I've seen him take him for a throw tonight. And the Eagles really may need to do it the further we get into this quarter, because they're down two scores. We only have 10.47 remaining. And it's third and 15 here. Another reason why they probably would want to throw the ball sooner than later. They are going with kind of a spread. Three receivers on the left. Zesh rolls out. The play is blown dead. Those Crusaders are crowding the backfield. So this was a few plays ago when Hom went down. He's on the left side of your screen. And way behind the play and just... Yeah, the trip there. And he's being worked on the sideline right now, getting stretched out. See if he returns. Obviously a big loss for him to not be out there for the Crusaders. So that penalty makes it third and 20 now. So now the Eagles are backed up to the 29-yard line. So yeah, it looks like that high calf there that they're trying to work out. They can get back in, that'll be a big help. Tom has been a dynamic player for the Crusaders tonight. Here on third down for the Eagles. And it's a give to Monroe. 
Beats a couple of guys. He's back to the original marker. So well short of the first down. That gets about 10, play, 10 yards on the play. You can see there's a fake. I don't know if it's a wildcat or not. Nearly could have been a face mask there. You see his, he has a hand on his helmet. Well, Troth kind of got hit with friendly fire there and a little slow to get up. Just un unsure why Monroe hasn't had more success because when he gets an open space, it looks really good. Well, that's for sure. They've had some success to that. There are four receivers here on fourth down. It's actually a different quarterback on this play. Jesse Falk. Cross back rolls deep. Fires, and it's picked off by the Crusaders. Longville with an interception. And I believe it went from quarterback to quarterback. <laughs> but he has all kinds of time, buying some time with his legs. But that's Longville coming in to make the pick. Yeah, throwing off his back foot, hard to get. A lot of zip on it. A terrible no-no for passing techniques. The interception, that's that's like the equivalent of a National League pitcher hitting a home run at, you know, help, helping out their own cause. Exactly. So I got to ask your opinion. What do you think of the Tampa Bay Rays decision to pull Snell if you watch that six and final well, game? <laughs> I think that's universally uh, accepted that probably not the, the right call there. I think it's a safe bet. I mean, what's, what's a quality start in baseball? Five innings, three runs? That's where they say that that's... That, and it, that and sounds then about right. Once the playoffs roll around, that completely goes out the window. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we're kind of in the middle of the analytics and everything's swinging heavy on that side. And I think it needs to come back to the middle a little bit where you use the analytics, but then also use your gut. And uh, so I think that it was a big uh, like mental boost for the Dodgers when they saw Snell come out because they weren't they weren't touching him. That's so true. That was that really was anybody's game. When Snell was in there, then it was kind of all over once he was out. And it was it was the exact same with that Vikings Seattle game. As soon as the Vikings got stopped at the goal line, all the all the momentum went went back to Seattle. Well, that's kind of been the the story to the Viking season in a couple cases. They really had chances to have a better season than they've had, but now we'll see what they do with the. One and five start. So St. Croix running with the ball here. It's third and three now. Actually, fourth and three, excuse me. Inside eight minutes. So not a lot of time for Bloomington Kennedy down two scores considering they have not really been able to throw the football tonight. The only real pass completion was the fake <laughs> the, punt at the beginning oh. of the game. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the interception to Longville. That too, that also counts as a completion of sorts. Not the completion you want to have though if you're the Bloomington Kennedy Eagles. And the Crusaders will punt here. At least apparently they will punt. And they do, and this one's going to get a good bounce to the 30. No runs, kind of running loose with the ball. A couple of Crusaders miss him. There's a flag, though. I'm thinking a block in the back the, the, where this was on the field. That yeah. might be right there, that face mask. Had his hand all over his face mask. I would assume that's for the block, but. 
We don't, we don't typically see the offensive face mask called much. We're waiting for the call here. So that penalty is declined. So there was a personal foul blindside block and then there was a block in the back. The defensive block in the back is the one that holds. That's gonna set the Eagles way back. They would have had the ball at the 35, but instead it's backing up inside the 20. 6.56 remaining, they're down two scores. Need to break off a big run. They really have to. That's about their only option at this point. They're down this far. Considering the, their passing game, they've been reliant on the run all night. And they worked once the big run in the second quarter, which tied the game. It's kind of been all St. Croix Lutheran since. And a short gain here. So we did find that block in the backs. 34 was the one that uh, committed it. You see it right there in the middle of the run as he's kind of getting into the open. Yeah, easy, easy one to call. But that one was very clear indeed. But that that was the one that they turned down, I believe, and they took the the other block that ha happened further downfield. Another run here on second down. That was second and four. And that was Barber with the carry. Steber with the tackle for the Crusaders. Down to six minutes left in the game. St. Croix Lutheran trying to notch their fourth straight win to start the season. Here's the Eagles on third and one. And a big run up to about midfield. That was Barber with the big run for the Eagles. The Eagles aren't throwing in the towel. The things may not get a lot easier for them next week. They play Columbia Heights. It's just Columbia Heights lost 27 to six to the Crusaders. So there's definitely a chance the Eagles have a competitive showing next week too. Here's a run for the Eagles. This is so about seven yards. And there's so a flag on the play. Arndt had the tackle on that play. That penalty was on the Crusaders, so that will move the chains. And really, that gives Kennedy, you know, a little bit more life here. If they can get a couple long running plays, I mean, we could be back to a one-score game again. First down here for the Eagles. It's a run. And the uh, Crusaders are quick to meet him. That was Stever and Arndt pushing the Eagles back. St. Croix Luther next week. They can go to 4-0. We have a big game next week with uh, Minneapolis Washburn, which is also off to an unbeaten start. They are three and I don't know what their score is tonight. Oh, 
But the Crusaders stuffed the Eagles on that play. The second and 11, now it's third down. So that'll be on the road for the Crusaders next week. They're going to Minneapolis, Washburn. It's kind of a weird time. It's 1 p.m. on Saturday the 7th, so it's not a Friday night game. It's gonna be on a Saturday afternoon. Wonder if we'll be seeing more of that with how late in the year we're getting. Because the game time temp when it started wasn't that bad. It started dropping pretty quickly at, at half. It's starting to cold. This is this is section football playoff weather, not a <laughs> regular season. Short gain there for the Eagles. That's Monroe again. On that third and twelve, bring up fourth down. It looks like we have a player nicked up here. It's number 84. I think it's just cramped up. That's Christopher Martin, 6'6", 245, defensive end, a junior for the Eagles. Well, Game of the Week is supported by Ultimate Carpet and Upholstery Cleaning, the cleaner, a greener carpet cleaner. More information can be found at ultimatecarpet.us. Big thanks to all of our Game of the Week sponsors for the fall season part two. And Matthew, we have uh, another comment on Facebook. Sue says, go Eagles. So we do have uh, some Bloomington folks yeah. following along, which, oh, there we are. Which reminds me, it's, I don't think they play each other this year, but one rivalry that's always kind of good in high school football in the Metro is the Battle of Bloomington between Jefferson and Kennedy. I'll just glance at their schedule. They don't play each other this year. Of course, it's a shortened season with COVID. And of course, districts have also impacted who plays who, and I know that district football has kind of well, they, detailed some rivalries. They share a field, don't they? They do. Okay. They do share a field. So they, what, take turns on who who's home team, who's not? Or are they just both home team when they play each other? I that is a good question. I suppose you would have <laughs> to like just kind of flip a coin or decide who's the home team when you play each other there. It'd be weird if you're used to being on one side of the field in one locker room and then you have to switch. Well, it's got to be odd for sure. Well, it's a fourth down here. Fourth and seven. Probably the game on the line on this play. Yeah, this is this is pretty much the game here, especially with only three minutes left. Eagles try some trickery. And Monroe's gonna pass and it it did complete, but I mean he it looked like he had the ball for a minute, and then he just kind of popped it out of his hands. Yeah, he might have trapped it and then as he was rolling over it it popped up. That was Antonio Ortega Escobar, a junior receiver. Had the ball, he's near the ground, and yeah, I think it just it just popped out of his hands. Had it not popped out, uh, his body was kind of shielding the ball from the closest referee, and they, they might have called this a completed catch had it not. Oh, I see, it hits the ground. He was kind of trying to gain possession. So turnover on downs, and now Zaykor can Wrap this one up with 2.57 left, up two scores. They still need to get a first down or two before they can kneel. Was, was Tome with a run? A two yard gain for Jack Tome. Sophomore running back and linebacker. The St. Croix Lutheran, they moved to 4 and 0 with a win here. Whoa, you're crowning them already? I mean, if they can you, you try finish to, it out here. If they can move to 4 and 0. You know about the announcer jinx, right? Yeah, we probably don't want to jinx them. You're putting some bad juju out in the, out in the universe. And it's the night before Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a, uh, it looks like a pretty close to a full moon. Oh my. So. 
You're, I you're, shouldn't have said that. We're here to the two minute ward. There's still two scores, but anything can go wrong in any game. There's Dyson, Dyson with danger. A bunch of they play at Washburn next week, but then they finish at St. Anthony Village. And St. Anthony Village, they have a nice nice program going over there. They went to the state tournament a couple years ago for the first time in about like 29, 30 years. That won't be an easy game to wrap up the regular season. I have a feeling, right but we talked about the announcer's jinx. I have a feeling we're about to see that full moon pretty soon. There's a chance. There we go. <laughs> There's that full moon. It looks a little bit green. But Kennedy will take a timeout. They have 128 left. Obviously, they would need to get two quick stops. And they would need some incredibly big plays and an onside kick in order to make anything happen at this point. But and I did look up that is, we're not quite at a full moon yet. So it is a full moon tomorrow on Halloween. How about that? And that so that's has sealed my fate. I am not trick or treating. I'm turning my porch light off. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many people trick or treat and how many people don't tomorrow during the pandemic. So nothing but trouble can happen on a full moon on Halloween. All right, Matthew, we also got Marnie watching on Facebook. Great work, Crusaders. Go Tom Troth, number four. Happy birthday to Vlako Stankovic, number 26. That's awfully nice of Marnie. It was. Got a good following tonight. Second and seven for the Crusaders. Minute 28 remaining in the game. And the Eagles bottled them up right away. That was armed with no gain. Jesse Falk with the tackle. Brings up third down. Eagles will take a timeout. Also, this isn't a section game for St. Croix. It obviously doesn't have a great deal bearing on the section standings, but they remain, with a win tonight, they remain one of two unbeatens in section four. Presuming uh, Cannon Falls wins tonight. Cannon Falls is 4-0 on the season. Or Cannon Falls already played their game for the week, I should, should say. St. Croix Luther moving to 4-0, so that would keep them in a tie for the top seed. Then you would have Breck at number three, and then a log jam at the bottom. If you can call the bottom standings a log jam. Minneapolis, Roosevelt, Lake City, and Ridgefield all at one and two. The breeze is starting to pick up now, and you it's got, getting a breeze. got a little bit of a bite to it. And some flags here. A false start on the play. We'll make it third and 13 now. Yep, for a Kennedy team that's had trouble passing tonight, this circumstance is going to make it even harder now with the wind because they'd be throwing into the wind. I believe the last pass play they had was probably their most aggressive pass play of the night, using creativity with Monroe throwing it. Yeah, I, I, I like the call. And it looked like he had the option to run or throw. We have a spread here on third and 13. Longville dropping back. And this pass is overthrown. It nearly could have been picked off. It was intended for Rush. Walker was trying to get the pick, but it was a little ways above his head. It was a good play call. I mean, you want to use these opportunities to get, 
practice some different plays, work on your execution, even when the game is more or less decided. Well, and if you go deep like that and it gets intercepted, it's basically a punt, so. It really is. Not, not all interceptions are the same. No, that would be a good interception in some ways. If you can say that. Yeah, you can say it. Say whatever you want. Well, maybe not whatever you want. We don't want to get Toby in, in hot water. Ugh. And we do have a punt here. It feels like with the first punt being a fake punt, every, every, every other punt tonight was kind of like trick or treat. Like, is it going to be a punt? Is it going to be a fake? Um, no, every punt ever since has been just a punt. We're now inside a minute. And that one landed at the 23 yard line. That's where Kennedy will take over with a minute left. We'll look at their standings. They're at the bottom of uh, section three. St. Thomas Academy at the top at three and zero. Then you have Apple Valley, Hastings, at Park, and Henry Sibley all at one and two. Does uh, Bloomington play Sibley this year? We'll have to take a look at that. Uh, the remaining schedule for the Eagles. They do not. They play Columbia Heights and they oh. play at Mount Westonka. I was gonna say uh, that, that might be a, actually a pretty good game though watch because Sibley's you saw there they're finally in the, the win column after having two years of no wins they got some they got some really good players on their team a big win for the Warriors it's got to be a great feeling I uh I covered Robbinsdale Armstrong a few years ago for the Sun newspapers and they had a similar deal where they went a few years without a win and they got a win over White Bear Lake, I believe it was. It was like they had won the Super Bowl. They players were elated. They were partying on the field. They were excited. It's a it's a great feeling when you can end a streak like that. Do we know if uh, Henry Sibley if they if they took down the goalposts in celebration? That would be interesting to find out. I have not seen that at a high school game ever. So march them right down Robert Street. You almost think you'd have to. Now, hypothetically, if they were to play Eden Prairie and beat Eden Prairie, do you think they would do it then? <laughs> yeah, I think you'd have to. Here's a throw to the outside and a late hit. That is probably going to draw a flag, or at least it should. That was a very late hit. The refs might just let that one go at this point. And there's no flag. I'll be bring up third and ten. And it's Jack Tommy with the uh, with the late hit. No penalty to go along with it. Fifty seconds left in this one. St. Croix Lutheran heading to four and zero. Kennedy heading to zero and four. And the handoff here. And it's Alasani with the run. It's a nice little delay. Short of the first down. Be fourth and one, they can probably let the clock just run out here. They probably still have to run one more play just because of the play clock. It looks like they're going to go ahead and do it. Back to pass here in fourth down. Let's play the game and a pick. Lucas Blomquist, senior receiver, defensive back. Yeah, he had a great With game the pick. tonight. Great game tonight for him, yes. A lot of, a lot of game balls to go around tonight. I mean, Zach Longville had a great game throwing yeah. the football. Andy Rosh made some really nice catches. Zach Art was just all over the place tonight. I mean, running the football, catching the ball. And then, yeah, how about the two big D tackles for St. Croix? Kind of up there stuffing the run all night. Yeah, you had some really nice performances from guys like uh, Isaiah Steber. Yep. He was just in Kennedy's face all night tonight. About to take a knee here as St. Croix Lutheran's doubling its win total from last year with four wins. They're 4-0 on the season. 
Great feeling for the Crusaders as they win 27 to 14 over the Kennedy Eagles. Big win for the Crusaders. It didn't come easy. Kennedy hung around for a lot of this game, but clearly the second half, St. Croix established itself, took control in that third quarter, and uh, finished it off. So they're doing a post-game handshake social distance style. Kind of apart, a little more than six feet, more like 10, 12. As the Crusaders go off to celebrate. Here's that last touchdown from Longville to Rosh. He was as open as Monroe was on that fake punt. It was. It was as open as you can ask for. So again, the final, St. Croix Lutheran 27, Bloomington Kennedy 14. Thank you for joining us and have a good night. Thank you.